Okay, it should be working now, yeah? Welcome back. I think it's working now. I, I think I had audio on my phone when I checked my stream. Good. Yes. Okay. So when I did like a quick Google search of it, it looks like it's a known um, issue when a stream disconnects and then Streamlabs, that's what I'm using uh, for my streaming, tries to reconnect. It drops the audio for some reason. Um, so I'm going to Google about that a little more to see if there's a fix, um, like a setting I can click on and get that corrected. Um, just because, you know, if it ever drops again, it's, I mean, the issue is just going to happen again. So I'll Google a little bit and see if there's something, um, a setting I could turn on or if there's a way that you can just fix it and keep going with your stream. Um, because right now I just, between being sick still and <laughs> trying to run the first stream, I don't really have the like attention uh, to detail that I need to be able to look into it right now. But I'll definitely Google about it and figure out if there's a fix other than like ending the stream and restarting it like I just did. Hopefully there's something that I can do whether it's like, um, like in the settings or something that I can change it, but we'll see if not, then it'll just be saying, cause when it, when it disconnected, something did pop up on my second monitor real quick and then it disappeared right away. So I didn't think anything of it. I think it was Streamlabs like saying you've been disconnected and then it reconnected like immediately. So I didn't really see the pop up. Um, so I kind of got like a notification that it happened. So I'll know in the future, like if that happens again, what happened and that, that my audio is most likely gone. So. So. I will get this full rest done. And Asterion looks like he's looking for a snack. What is this? I didn't even know I had a ward on me. This this is the first time I've ever played like a wizard class. So uh, on my main playthrough on the computer, my guy is a monk. So I'm just getting in there and punching people to death. And then on the PlayStation, I'm playing this also with my fiance on there. And I play a paladin in that one. So again, I'm just running up and smashing stuff to death with my sword. So, being behind the lines as a wizard and casting spells and that kind of stuff, I usually don't take that role when I play RPGs, so it's a learning experience with that. I did log into my Twitch though on my Streamlabs thing so I can communicate in the chat easier and interact with the chat easier than having to also have Twitch up in a, a web browser. So I did that real quick when we were dealing with the audio issue. 
smashing enemies is so much more fun. Definitely, definitely. Like, I, I really like, um, um, sorry, I thought I got a bloody nose. Um, I really like hack and slash games, like the Diablo games. Those are fun. Um, the Dark Alliance games, which is a, a, another Boulder, Boulder's Gate. Um, just that dun dungeon crawler, you know, so you still kind of get the RPG element, um, but then you're just going through smashing shit, um, killing enemies, um, loot and stuff. Um, I definitely like, um, games with swords and spells and that kind of stuff. Um, but I'm definitely more of the swords and smashing stuff than the spells and casting things. So, like, uh, I used to play World of Warcraft a lot. Um, and, I mean, I was really into it. Like, I had notebooks on raid notes for how to do the boss fights and raids on World of Warcraft. Um, I was the note taker. So I would run the raids and tell people how to do the fights. And when on World of Warcraft, even, I was melee roll. Because um, I wanted to be up in there smashing shit. I wasn't a spellcaster. I wasn't a healer. I didn't play tank because I had a bad experience playing as a tank. And I just swore off doing that. But I was just DPS as a, a death knight in your face, smashing stuff. So that's definitely what I like to do. I don't play um, first-person shooters that much. Um, like, I play uh, Deep Rock Galactic with Luna a lot, or by myself. So that will probably come up on my stream. Um, actually, probably on Tuesday, I'll probably stream that. My, my streaming schedule, for sure, is Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, weekends, if I feel up to it, or if I'm home, because sometimes I do go visit family, so I'm not at home and I cannot stream. Um, so on Tuesdays, you'll probably catch a Deep Rock Galactic or two, and that's a first-person shooter. Um, I used to play Call of Duty a lot on the PlayStation, but I kind of fell out of that. And then Helldivers, I don't think, technically, it's not a first-person shooter. It's a, in third-person, but it's still a shooting game, so. <sighs> you have no regard for HP. Yeah, that's pretty much tank roll, so. Um, definitely. Like, you know. Um, and then Thursday's my Thursday stream. Um, I really I need to work on it to get it set up. But I plan on doing a throwback Thursday stream. And right now, uh, it's this old game that was on original PlayStation called The Legend of Dragoon. Absolutely fucking love it. It is an RPG. Um, but I love that game. Uh, when I played it as a kid, it's what first really got me into gaming, especially with RPG games. Um, it kind of has a cult following. A lot of people have been trying to push Sony Studios into remaking it and making a second game. Like, I think they could do pretty well making a prequel to the game and then re releasing a remake of the original game and maybe a sequel. You could maybe roll a sequel off it, but definitely a prequel. Because in the game they mentioned a dragon war or something. I, I don't remember exactly, but we'll say a dragon war. And there was a lot of information going on about that. So I think if they did a prequel kind of covering the dragon war and the events in that, it could do pretty decent. And then you do a remake of the second or of the, of the original game released after that so that people that have never played it could play the remake. They get that prequel so they have a little more information about the dragon war. But... Um, it was, it was originally on the, the original PlayStation and it had four discs. That's how big the game is. It had four discs. I actually still have those four discs over on my bookshelf in my office here. <laughs> I don't have an original PlayStation still, but I do have the discs for the game because I just, I never got rid of them. I love the game. I'm not going to get rid of it. And, um, uh, so, um, I absolutely love that game. I always wanted to play it again. And then Sony went ahead and put it in their digital library. So if you have like, um, I don't know if you can get it on just regular as a regular Sony um, account, but I have the, the PlayStation premium account. So you get access. Yes. Yes. The old uh, gray one. That's how old I am. 
<laughs> uh, I'm so old I had a Sega Genesis as a kid with the old original Sonic games. Um, but anyways, um, so the PlayStation Premium accounts, you have access to their large um, digital library, and they put uh, The Legend of Dragoon in there. So I do have it downloaded onto my PS5. So that's what I'm going to be playing for Throwback Thursdays, is I'm going to be doing a playthrough of The Legend of Dragoon. And like I said, it was four discs long on the PlayStation, so it is a longer game. It's going to take quite a while if I'm playing it just on Thursday. But, uh, um, and I mean, the graphics are old. It's definitely not nothing new, you know. Um, but I really enjoy the game. Hopefully, you know, other people will enjoy it too. Not a lot of people stream it. Not a lot of people stream it in English. There are quite a few people that stream it in um, Japanese. So... But, uh, oh, you used to play Duck Hunt on PlayStation 1. Yeah. But, uh, so that, that's what my Thursday stream is going to be, is, uh, Throwback Thursday, playing Legend of Dragoon. Um, my, it's, it is my great love. <laughs> it's my fiance and the Legend of Dragoon. And then maybe the cats too, when they're not annoying. But, uh, so I'll play that. You can watch, you can enjoy. It's gonna, it's gonna take a while. But I, I think it's a great game, um, and I think if they, you know, did a remake of it, it could do pretty good. Like, a lot of people really into uh, Final Fantasy VII when they did the remake of that. People went crazy over it. But, I mean, part of that could also be because it's Final Fantasy. You know, Final Fantasy games have a big following already. Um, but I think there's a, a big enough following for Legend of Dragon that it could, it could do pretty decent, I think, if they remade it. So, but, so that's Thursday. Tuesday is going to be kind of whatever I feel like playing. Thursday is Throwback Thursday. And the weekends, if I stream, also probably going to be kind of whatever I feel like doing. Um, but mostly probably like um, Baldur's Gate here with my evil playthrough. So I want to try and keep that for the weekends. So I know as soon as I walk through this door, I'm going to get in a fight because I've gone this way before. So I am just going to go ahead and save it so I don't fuck it up. Because um, I can't see anything right now, but once I open this door, it's going to let me see. And I know there's, like, somewhere over here, there's some people grouped up by a barrel that I can explode. So I'm thinking if I should launch this firebolt over at it and blow it up, I can kill them. Right there. There's those barrels. So... Let's see. We've got... They got bows. So this person right here is the second person to go. She's right by the exploding barrel still. But since she's got a bow, she's probably not going to move. So I should... Well, actually, Asterion has the same spell. So I can pop him in here and shoot at that barrel right away. And hopefully blow them up and take them out. Uh, just kidding. He's in a really bad place. You know what? I'm just going to reload it and put him in a better position because that it's a tricky when you're in a door area like that. If you don't have your people put around, then, then it, it screws it up. I have a much greater memory than you. Um, <laughs> depends on what I'm trying to remember. My, my uh, favorite line to use, if I don't remember something, that somebody asks me a question, especially at work, I use this line a lot at work. Um, so, say you ask me uh, at work, um, if I remember so-and-so customer ordering something, my response would be, <laughs> I don't remember, I've slept since then. So that is a great excuse if you need one for not remembering something. Um, it's just that you've slept since then, so of course you don't remember. Um, so, I remember some things, but, uh, a lot of the time I don't. Can't give up now. Um, it's definitely a selective memory kind of thing. And, uh, I guess part of that is... Uh, video games is the thing that I get to remember more about. I'm just going to save it again since I have them positioned well now. Um, 
like when it comes to when I start playing Legend of Dragoon again, I there'll definitely be parts that I do remember. And then I'm sure with it being four discs long, there's going to be a lot of that game that I don't remember. But there is one specific part right at the beginning of the game that I do remember that I I love. You get to this little, um, like, fort. There you go. Uh, this little uh, fort. And you go into this one building and you go up to this fireplace and you interact with the fireplace. And the text screen that comes up says, this fire really puts me in the mood to do it. It's so out of pocket. Like, why does this game have that line in there? It's, it's fucking weird. Because if I remember right, it's rated T for teen. And then there's that line, like, out of nowhere, just because you examined a fireplace. And then that's, I, I laughed so fucking hard when I first got that. And I didn't, like, it was probably like, the third time I had played the game when I, I got that pop-up. Like, I just, because that one, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do everything. I'm going to search. I'm going to go through every building. I'm going to search every container. I'm going to interact with everything I fucking can. So, and th that one is when I went to that random house, because it's not one that you needed to go into, but I wanted to go into every building. I interacted with the fireplace, because in that game, um, there's a collectible you can get called Stardust, and I honestly don't remember how much there is or what the fuck you do with it. Um, but you find it in random spots. So, like, you examine a basket. Oh, you found some Stardust, you know? So I was hunting for that shit. So I examine the fireplace. I'm like, mm, maybe I'll find some Stardust in here. And I get, instead I get that fucking line saying, it just puts me in the mood to do it. I'm like, ugh, oh, this is great. But, yeah, and for however many times I played it, I never got that, that text line before, before then. So... But I love that. I, I absolutely love that game. And, uh... Wow, this is shit. Now nobody's by that barrel. Fuck, man. <laughs> Just reload, I guess. Um, But it's a really good game. I'm gonna have a lot of fun playing it again. Um, uh, they, they even put, um... Uh, achievements, or Sony calls it trophies... So I'll earn um, the achievements as I play the game. I haven't looked into it to see what uh, achievements they've given. I'm sure there's one, like, um, based on the storyline. Like, oh, you, you found so-and-so um, at the village as you as you play the storyline, that kind of thing. And then there's there's side stuff, too. There's quite a bit of side stuff in that game. So I don't know if they'll add achievements for the side stuff, too, to try and get people to play it. That's a better lineup. Um, damn, he still moved away though. Um, so we'll see what kind of achievements. I am definitely one of the players that it's like, I want to get all the achievements, uh, especially if they're easily doable achievements uh, on games that are like, you have to go in the multiplayer and get those achievements, that kind of thing. Why can I not? Um, those ones, you know, I'm not too concerned about any kind of achievements that are going to be multiplayer based. Um, but any achievements that aren't, that I can easily sit there and get there, get them, I want to get them. I need to get the achievements. Uh, there's a few games that I've gotten all the achievements on, honestly not many. There's probably some games that I can go through and actually get all the achievements on, but that's just me and how I play. And um, like I said, if I can get them, I want to get them. Okay, let's blow her up. Oh, that just barely missed Lazel. I did. I did not know it was gonna explode that big. I am so glad that she was that far away, because honestly, that might have killed her. <laughs> oh, that could have ended so badly. Um, I mean, uh, <laughs> on my original, my first playthrough on the computer, my monk has gloves that cause explosive damage with each um, unarmed attack, which as a monk, that's your attack. It's unarmed. So every attack he does is an explosion. 
and I was in a wine cellar and I used the gloves and I learned the hard way that the wine barrels in this game are explosive when attacked with fire damage. So of course I attack something next to a wine barrel. I cause the explosive damage from my gloves. The wine barrel explodes. It sets off a chain reaction and explodes the entire wine cellar and all of the wine barrels. And I completely kill my entire party. I did not realize it was me doing it. So I reloaded. I went in there and I did the exact same thing again. I killed my entire party a second time. And that's when I realized it was me. So I had to change what clothes my monk was wearing to get through that little dungeon area. Um, I was definitely embarrassed that, uh, Ready. that I didn't realize it was me doing it. And I'm glad I wasn't streaming at the time because that would have been really embarrassing. But, uh, I, I learned my lesson. I know that now. And, um, I'm just moving forward from it. I think I'm going to take this guy out. Or not. She missed. See, that's why I don't like Shadowheart. I feel like she misses a lot. And I feel like that's a lot of people's issues uh, with Shadowheart is that she misses a lot. Um, so I'm going to do some healing. I'm going to do it on Sterian. Just because I know he's a little squishy and I'm afraid of how this is going to turn out here with this uh, Torga. I don't know how hard they hit. And, um, I don't want Asterion to get no fucked up. To keep going. These boots have seen everything. Okay. And I'm going to use my magic missile on this guy. And hopefully it kills him. Or not. Oh, that's a girl. Oh well. But she's almost dead, so she's gonna be dead next turn. Hi, Cherry Berry! A little help, please. Thank you for joining the stream! And thank you for the follow! I am playing Baldur's Gate 3. I'm doing an evil playthrough. Um, I haven't gotten very far. I had some technical difficulties a little bit ago, so I had to restart the stream. Um, yep, I know, I know you're from uh, Luna's uh, server. I recognize your screen name. Luna very kindly um, gave me a shout out on the server when I started the stream. I do also have a Discord server. I need to set up a, a um, um, shortcut on my stream for doing an invite to the Discord. So that is on my list of things to do before my next one. But here's a link to my Discord as well if you wanted to join that. It, this is uh, my first stream, so the Discord doesn't really have anybody on it because it is also a new server. Um, but hopefully, you know, as we move along um, and I stream some more, the Discord server will grow. Okay. It will be very helpful later on when Asterion gets more attacks as he levels up. Because I'm going to multi-class him with a monk. And it's going to give him a lot of attacks at once. So he's going to be able to hit like uh, four times in a row. And he's going to be able to do a lot of damage at once. And it will make up for him having low health points. 
if I can have him do a lot of damage. And then with him being a rogue as well, I can do a disengage. And so I'm just going to kind of show what I'm talking about right here. So I can do a disengage. And then since I still have some movement on him here, I would be able to move away. And uh, then in theory, he like I am definitely still within range of this person. But if I did the disengage and had enough movement away, I can move around. So I could run up, hit him, do a bunch of damage, disengage, run away. And just kind of keep doing that, and that will help him with his low health, uh, being able to still really do a lot in the battle. So we'll see. And I just realized that Shadowheart over here is down and dying, because that's what Shadowheart does. She's kind of useless. So she's doing what Shadowhearts do best. Die. Never a dull moment. I'm going to make fan art of you. Feel free to. I will not say no. Um, I, I really like my little chibi character. I, I don't remember what website I went on to make her. Um, but it was kind of a pain to make the background, um, transparent so that I could have the background behind her. Because before it was, um, like a solid green and then I couldn't put anything behind her because it wasn't interacting correctly and it drove me nuts. But I got it with a little uh, help of one of my friends and co-workers because uh, she does some um, digital marketing kind of stuff. Um, so not necessarily um, like digital art, but like um, like logos and stuff for companies. Um, so she had some software on her computer I was able to use to get rid of it and make my background transparent. So I can swap out the background if I wanted. Like... Let's see, where's the program? So I could change it to like... Oh, what's happening? Oh, there we go. Ha! So I can change it to like that. I can move it to this. These are like the built-ins that come with the program that I'm using as a, as a um, virtual camera. So um, I didn't really care for any of these. So... I ended up finding, like, this one's actually not that bad, but, um, I found this one, um, as, like, a little empty office kind of thing with, like, I like the little computer on the desk. It's really cute. So, I'm like, that kind of fits the vibes I'm going for. Um, so, I just found that on Google, and I uploaded it into my, um, dig virtual camera program. Um, and so, um, uh, that's what her background is. But I can change it if I want to, so. I just really like this background. Uh, I, I mean, if I do, like, a holiday stream or something, I'll probably put, like, a, a Christmas-themed background or, like, a Halloween-themed background for that stream. Uh, and just switch it up a little bit. But for right now, this will probably just be my, my regular background uh, for uh, the, the normal, regular, not everyday stream. But you get what I mean. Um, this will just be kind of my standard background then. So we got rid of her. She did not get a single attack out, I don't think. I don't know. I wasn't paying attention when it was her turn. But now I got this guy. And he is a barbarian, it looks like. Which means he can do a lot of damage. And um, I'm a little bit concerned about that. Especially because Shadowheart was my healer and now she's down. So I might have... Um, gotten screwed up here, but I do have some health potions somewhere right here. Okay, I do have some potions of healing, so I can heal myself if I need to. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and drink one because it is a bonus action to drink one. And I got four health. Damn, he threw her dead body. Now she's burning alive, kind of. I don't know, she's still dying, so. Okay. Um. Oh, I forgot I had this person too, still. 
him. Okay, well, Lizelle's pretty much healed from herself. So I'm okay there. And now he's stuck, so I can't even move him. And Shadowheart just fucking died. This fight is not doing good. Hi, Kentai! Yes, thank you for joining the stream. I'm still gonna stream for like an hour and a half yet. I was gonna stream till 6 p.m. my time. Thank you for the follow. Um, so I still have like an hour and a half of streaming. And I know I told Blank uh, earlier, but I do plan on streaming tomorrow. Um, it'll be probably another six-ish hours tomorrow as well. And I plan on doing Helldivers 2 tomorrow. So it's not going to be Boulder's Gate. Uh, it's going to be Helldivers 2, which I have not played yet. I have it downloaded, um, but I haven't played it yet. So that's going to be fun trying to figure everything out. Um, and it will be my first time playing that. So I'm kind of excited. Um, I've got a lot of gameplay um, on my TikTok of that game recently. So we'll see how that goes. Nothing important is ever easy. Um, I've got one spell slot left, but then I can still use my cantrips. Mm. Shadowheart's just, she's laying down on the job. I don't think she did any damage this fight before she died, honestly. Oh shit. I, I didn't know Lazelle was in the way. I am a bad wizard. I guess I could have scooched over a little bit and not hit her, but... Are you in EST time zone? Um, I am in uh, CST, that's central time zone. So right now for me, it is 4.30. Yeah, I'm gonna have him play some background music. Or not, that just uh, ruined my concentration. He did, he's not happy that I'm playing the flute. He just bitch slapped me. You're three minutes ahead of me. Okay, it is 4.34 right now. I was just saying 4.30. <laughs> okay. Let's go wake up, Shadowheart. I'm pretty sure I have a scroll of resurrection. A revivify or whatever. Oh. Oh, I'm not done fighting it. I thought I was done with the fight. Apparently I'm not. Victory. Shit. Okay. Well. Forgot about this little side room here. Damn. Okay, now I'm done. Um, yeah, I've been so much Helldivers on my TikTok. That's all it is. Um, it, it's pretty much, I get um, cats doing weird stuff, or I get Helldivers too. That's all my TikTok is. And then if I'm on my Instagram, I my Instagram is foxes, because foxes are so cute. Or stuff in Polish that I don't understand what it's saying because I don't know Polish and I'm blaming I'm blaming Luna for that. So um, next time you talk to her, um, you can you can tell her I'm blaming her for my my Instagram being in Polish. Okay, get off your ass. A little help, please. Next time I'm gonna let you fucking die. You can stay dead. And we're going to do <laughs> some short rests and get our health back. I'll that one later. Wonder if the gods are watching me. And we'll group back up.
That was almost not a good fight there. Is this my first playthrough? It is not my play not my first playthrough, but I actually have not beaten the game yet. That is one of my problems. Um, is that <laughs> I, I don't beat games. Um so um hang on, let me get rid of some of this weight. Um so I have I have one playthrough that I'm playing on the computer as well. It's uh, Vegeta. He look. <laughs> I made him look like Vegeta from Dragon Ball Z, and he's a monk. Um, so as you can see, Vegeta don't fuck up. That's the save I use a lot when I'm in fights. So because I I fucked up so much on him. Um, so he looks like Vegeta from Dragon Ball Z, and he's a monk, so he punches shit to death. So that just fits Vegeta. And then. My uh, first one, my first playthrough that I actually started, which is actually now behind the Vegeta playthrough, is on the PlayStation on our PS5. I'm playing that one with my fiance. That one's also Dragonborn. I just like the Dragonborns as a race. Um, it's a Dragonborn Paladin. Um, and we don't get to play together that often because usually, you know, he's playing his game. I'm playing my game. Uh, we just generally don't play together that much. So when I started the Vegeta playthrough on the computer, it just kind of got ahead on its own anyways. So that was bound to happen. But, um, yeah, so this is technically my third playthrough. Um, but I'm going with an evil playthrough. So, uh, I already turned Shadowheart into an Oathbreaker because we murdered some people that I guess were innocents. I kind of forgot that they were innocents. But, um, well, they're dead now, so. Uh, so she is an Oathbreaker Paladin. Um, but she, I, I don't really like her. I find her kind of annoying. And she just, she dies all the fucking time anyways. Um, she's, she's either dead or she misses her hits. Like, this whole fight in this area, I don't think she landed a single fucking hit before she died. So she's pretty useless. Uh, I'm definitely going to swap her out. That's just what it is. Um, and unfortunately, I i mean, I absolutely... I love Carlac. Um, I love her character. Um, encumbered again? Damn. Um, but she doesn't like when people are evil. And since I'm doing an evil playthrough, um, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to have to kill Carlac. Because I'm not going to be able to deal with her being mad at me. Um, that I'll just bend to her will and do everything. Well, you, I have a paladin chart. I do. I multiclassed her. If you play on tactician or higher difficulty, you can multiclass. So um, she does start out as a cleric. But when I leveled her up to level 2, um, I multiclassed her into a paladin. And then I forgot that I took the oath to protect people. So when I killed those innocents, she immediately became an oath breaker. But, uh, yeah. We'll just continue on from there. Uh, but yes, unfortunately I am making the choice to kill Carlac Because I will not be able to deal with her being mad at me for being eat. I didn't mean to equip that, fuck. Um, I will not be able to deal with her being mad at me for killing people and being evil. So I'm just making the deliberate choice to kill her and take her out of the out of the picture. So that so, so that I don't get sad at her being mad at me. <laughs> so I've got some extra backpacks. I need to move these around. Um, I like to use them to organize myself. This is my brain bag, because as an evil person, I'm going to run around with these brains and these skulls, apparently. I made that decision early on, and we're just going with it. So, my party is going to be pretty much myself. Obviously, I don't think you can not play your character. Um, I don't think I can muster the strength to kill Carly. Yeah, honestly, I mean, I've got a bottle of liquor in the kitchen I might grab when I have to do the deed. 
but uh, I'm gonna get it done. <laughs> I'll cry. I'll cry myself to sleep. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I made the decision early on that I'm gonna be a weirdo walking around with um, some brains and skulls in a bag because that just seems like an evil person kind of thing. Um, but I like to utilize um, extra container bags to help organize my inventory. I haven't really done a lot of organization on this one, uh, on this playthrough. So uh, everything's just kind of everywhere right now. I'm sure when I'm off stream, I'll probably go through and organize things well for myself. Um, Cause I don't want to sit here and do inventory management when I'm, when I'm playing on stream, you know, I feel like that would be boring for you guys. Um, but I mean, I could show you how I have my inventory set up on the Vegeta playthrough. Um, this is still much more organized than anything I've ever done in beat Baldur's Gate 3. Okay. You know, I just saved it. I'm going to load up the Vegeta so I could show you that one. I'm going to show you his inventory and then I'm going to switch back to this one and keep playing. Um, it's definitely a part of my OCD that I need it so organized, but, but then, you know, I've got a bag just for potions and I've got a bag just for scrolls. And then, you know, this bag is where the camp supplies go automatically. So when I'm over encumbered, that's the first thing I send to camp. No, the only weird thing you've done that's weird. You kind of look like you're supposed to be in the squid game. Not the only thing weird thing I've done. That's weird. Yeah, I have done a lot of weird stuff so far in the playthrough already. Okay. So. Oh, shit. Okay, so his inventory is a mess right now. Please ignore this. Ignore all this extra shit in his bag. Apparently, I need I need to I need to sell shit. Apparently. Um, but we've got the alchemy pouch, um, an empty bag apparently. So this is just potions. Um, why is there a potion in this one? I don't know why there's, where did this bag come from? Shit. I haven't played Vegeta since October. It's a fucking hot mess, man. So this bag was like important items, so like quest items here, and then uh, my disarms and uh, my thieves tools and disarm trap, disarming kits in here. The shovel, all important, gotta have a shovel. Don't remember what the fuck this bag's for, apparently. Um, camp supplies, so the food. Key ring, I mean that's, that's self-explanatory, it's one of the, um, the automatic ones that you get in the game. Uh, here we go. This one is the special arrows. So like the acid arrow, arrow darkness, arrow fire, and then throwables. So these are all that I use for throwables. So the alchemist fire, the caustic bulb, grease. So if you grease bottle first and then uh, alchemist fire on top of that, you're going to catch them on fire. Awesome combination, honestly. Uh, spike bulb water. Always keep some water on you because if you come across an area that's on fire on the ground... You throw the water on it, it puts the fire out, you can cross safely. So I, I always keep some bottles of water on everybody so that I can do that. Um, and then this pouch, here we go. Here's my scrolls pouch. So we've got all the scrolls that I like to keep on them. Um, and this is just on Vegeta. So let's close all these extra tabs. Um, so I kind of have the same setup with everybody else. So they're going to have like a potions and scroll bag, um, and then a throwables bag on the other characters. So again, a potions and scrolls bag and kind of important items, and then a throwables bag. Um, 
I don't know why Styrian's got a book. <laughs> um, but that's his potions and um, since he is an assassin or a rogue, his, he's got a lot of poisons to put on his weapon. So he's got poisons and potions. And then, come on. Oop. Um, we've got some scrolls and stuff in there. Um, so, yeah, I haven't played my Vegeta playthrough since October. So when I play it again, I definitely have to, like, refresh and redo his inventory because it's kind of a hot mess, apparently. Jesus, that's a lot. Is that normal? Um, <laughs> not really. I'm a... I'm definitely a hoarder when it comes to video games, um, and, and collecting stuff, and, care like, obviously, like, look at this. That's so much shit. I gotta go through this. But, what's that? Oh, that's so cute. I forgot I had that. I'm gonna give that to Carlac. Why am I- I need to- let me get off this. So, on this one, I, my party is Carlac, Asterion, and, uh... Lazel on that one. Um, on this one, since I'm killing her, um, I, I can't have Karlac. Um, Asterion is chill if you're evil, so he's going to be in my party. Uh, Lazel, uh, if I remember right, when I googled about it, she's chill if you're evil, so she will be in my party. Um, and then uh, Minthara, she's uh, the evil replacement for Halston. So she will be in my party. So that's pretty much what my party makeup's going to be on my evil playthrough here. But, uh, so back to this, as you can tell, um, little baby inventory. Like I said, I'll go through when I'm off stream and I'll get this organized on my inventory here. Um, cause I'm not going to sit here and go through the inventory cause last time when I got it all set up for myself on the Vegeta playthrough, it took me like 45 minutes of just organizing my inventory, deciding where things were going to go, that kind of stuff. So I'm not going to sit here for 45 minutes on stream with you guys and do that, especially if my stream is only going to be like an hour and 10 minutes yet. You know, that's going to be like the rest of my stream is just going through inventory and I'm not going to do that. So this is the guy, um, blank. If you remember when I was outside of the temple and I shot that crate down and it killed the two people at once, he's the one that fell down through the hole. So this is the dead body from that. And the, right here, you can see there's the thing that I shot and it dropped down. It is right there. So, there is his dead body. Something good here, I hope. So, I was hoping uh, he would fall down here and I'd get to loot him. Uh, because that's the first time I success successfully did that. Um, because when I played through on Vegeta and I came through this air earlier um and I got to that area the two people had moved from that spot and I didn't even know that you could do that um so when I did this playthrough I definitely wanted to try it out just to see what would happen um and then um I don't know if you remember when I first tried to shoot it with a Asterion I missed so I, I shot the wrong thing so it didn't actually work um, Cast upon my until on I got my dragonborn to shoot it and I got the correct thing shot and it worked. So, uh, but that's what, one of the things I love about this game is the small details like that, that they put in. Um, like I love, I'm a book hoarder too, if you can't tell, cause I'm picking up all these books. Um, that they put small mechanics like that into this. So no matter how many times you play it, you can play it in such a different way that it's like new. Like like at the very beginning when I had my little brain guy, I'd never had the brain guy before. And then seeing how everybody was interacting with that, like and reacting to me having the little brain guy, which apparently nobody gave a fuck. And then I lost him. 
I don't have my little brain guy anymore, so I'm a little sad about that, but, you know. Um, but it's, it's kind of like, um, like Skyrim. Like, you could play Skyrim so many different ways, and, uh, it just comes out different each time, you know. I love games like that. Like, that's one of the things that I like when RPGs do it that way and it's open world and you can explore things and do things the way you want that um, apparently I didn't keep a torch on myself um, that you can play the game in so many different ways and it's fresh each way and that it just makes you want to keep playing it you know like, Skyrim is how many years old? I don't want to think about it because it's going to make me feel old, honestly. Um, and I, like, just recently found out, watching a TikTok, that there's a quest in, in Whiterun, so the first, like, main city you go into, um, that uh, there's a quest in Whiterun. There, so you go to the hold, and before you go to the hold, there's that that crispy ass dead tree, you know? There's a quest to renew that tree and it will turn into a, a beautifully <laughs> sprouted and nice green tree versus the old crispy dead one that's there. And I fucking never knew that, that there's a quest line for that. I just thought it was a dead ass tree that was there, you know? But it was like two or three weeks ago I saw a TikTok about it. I'm like, you gotta be shitting me. I didn't know there was a quest for that. Yeah, apparently you gotta talk to somebody like in the temple or something there in Whiterun. And then they give you, that starts like a, a quest line to, um, to, um, you can, if you do it a certain way, you can plant a completely different tree or you do it as, as regular and it like uh regrows the tree like not regrows it but the tree like uh i want to say blooms but you know it gets like the green leaves on it and shit and it turns into a normal tree so it's not all crispy and everything anymore um but yeah i didn't know that until i watched some tiktok video about it i'm like wow there there's so much about the game that I just didn't know about because it's just one of those ones where you have to go do all the little stuff in and and you you okay so that lever right there unlocked a door for me that I haven't gone to yet um, I don't know why it does a scary creepy noise like that but it just it unlocked a door for me that's all it did um, but uh, it's just the small things like that in in RPGs uh, and open world games that that just make them great and that's why I love playing them, you know, not only for the story, but, you know, being able to play them in different ways and experience almost like a whole new game again. So I don't, I honestly don't remember entirely what's through the door, so I'm going to save it because I, I don't remember if there's anything I got to fight. There is way too much to do, and I only recently found out there's a necromancer spell. Excuse me. Yeah, there's a lot on Skyrim, and that is one of the very few games that I have 100% achievement done um, on the on the Xbox. I don't have it 100% achievements on on Steam. Um, but I I also have so many copies of that game too. Like I've got it. I had it on 360. When it first came out and then i bought it on the xbox one because i got rid of my 360. um and then um i bought it on steam because i'm like i'm gonna go on the computer and i'm gonna mod it never did <laughs> and then they had a thing on steam where if you owned the regular edition plus all the dlcs you automatically got the special edition for free so technically i have the special edition also on steam 
and then I bought it on my Nintendo Switch because I wanted something that I could play in different ways over and over again kind of thing on on my Switch so that was mobile. You know, like if I went somewhere on a trip, I could bring my Switch with me and I could find a lot of value playing Steam or Skyrim uh, on on my Switch versus like a game that you, you play it once, it's the same fucking story and you can't change anything about it. So I just, I bought Skyrim again on my, on my Switch. Um, so I've bought Skyrim three times. Um, and I mean, if I really wanted to, I can download it on the PlayStation also because on, I think it's free on PlayStation Premium if I, if I remember right. Still waiting on the very, very special edition. The very, very special edition is playing it on the computer and modding the shit out of it. Like, like there's a mod that turns the dragons into Thomas the Train Engine. So it's just a fucking cartoon train engine coming at you. Um, you know, like I want, I really want to play, um, um, Fallout Four and do some mods with that, uh, because like there's the mod with the um the mini nuke launcher, or whatever it's called. I can't remember it off the top of my head. Um, that instead of launching mini nukes, you launch babies. So it's just a baby that gets launched, and then it fucking explodes with the whole beautiful mushroom cloud, you know? Um, so that's a little fucked up, but I would totally play that. That sounds like fun. Um, you know, so I, I definitely want to get into playing some game mods too, maybe on stream. Uh, maybe do something where you guys suggest a mod for me to try. Um, I did mod... I, I downloaded like, <laughs> I downloaded like 50 mods for, for Stardew Valley and I haven't played it since I downloaded all those mods because I have to go through setting them up and I was so overwhelmed with that that I'm like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good right now. I don't need to do that. And I, I haven't gone back to it to fuck with it again, but I did a lot of mods to make it like. Uh, medieval town, medieval farm, that kind of thing. Because that's one of the things that I'm, like, really into is uh, medieval times and uh, swords and, and that kind of stuff. So I really liked the look of those mods that I downloaded. And then I just never went through setting them up to play Stardew. So, um, and actually, honestly, my main save of Stardew Valley is on my Nintendo Switch anyways. Which... Uh, eventually I do want to look at getting a capture card because then I can stream on my Switch and on the Xbox also for you guys. Um, and it, when I do that, if I remember right, there's a bunch of traps in this room, so I'm going to save again right now. Um, when I do eventually get a, uh, capture card, I could totally stream my main farm on Stardew Valley because I really, I love the layout of the farm. Um, and I could show you that on my Switch. I just, I can't do it right now. Yeah, yeah, there's traps in this room. Um, I just can't do it right now because I can't stream from my Switch without, without the capture card, unfortunately. So, um, and I looked into getting a capture card and there's some pretty cheap options, you know, like under a hundred dollars. But the one I really want to get, that's like when I look up like what capture card you should use. Um, it's all, I never looted that. What? Did I not loot that? Damn, okay. Um. I forgot to loot that, wow. Um, so the, the top capture card that I get on like every list when I look it up is like 150 bucks. Which, I mean, it's not too bad, but I already spent some extra money this month on a couple video games. I ordered the new, the mic that I'm using for the stream, uh, because my friends told me my mic I had before was shit. So I'm like, well, if I'm going to start streaming, I need a good mic so you guys can hear me. <laughs> um, and then, uh, next week I do, I, I gotta pay rent next week. So, uh, you know, some more important things I need to pay. Um, but yeah, probably sometime next month, if not for sure, April, uh, I'll pick up a, uh, a capture card and I can do some things on the other systems too. Because on the PS5, I can actually set up without a capture card. I can stream from my PS5. 
So doing my throwback Thursday with Legend of Dragoon shouldn't be a problem. I can set it up. That will be good. But my other ones, like the Nintendo Switch and then uh, the Xbox, I am going to have to uh, get a capture card to do that. So. Yeah, they're actually teasing me a bit. They're <laughs> because my old mic, like, if I went up too high, like, I was playing Demonologist with, with Luna. And she, she couldn't hear me when I screamed. And, like, you'd hear, like, ah! And then it would cut off the rest of my scream because my mic would peek out and be like, nope, I can't handle that. So I'm like, I'm like, no, it doesn't. Like, I can hear it just fine. And they're like, no, no, we can't hear you. So, so I went back to one of Luna's streams where we were playing Demonologist and I listened to it. I'm like, oh shit. Yeah. Yeah. You can't hear me at all. Like, like I said, it, you got the, ah, at the beginning of my scream and then the rest of it is absolutely gone. So she's like, where are you? Like, where did you go? And I'm like in the other room screaming, but she can't hear me at all because my mic isn't fucking picking it up. My mic is like, nah, I can't handle this. Like you're too much. Oh, okay, perception failed. So my dragonborn can't see the traps. Uh, if I remember right, I think Asterion has really high perception. Perception, deception, perception. So he's got a plus three. Uh, she's got a plus one, not good. She's got a plus three. I've got a plus zero. So I'd be tripping over dead bodies because I can't see them. Okay. So yeah, so one of the things I got, um, was a nice good mic I got um, I do have like my um, my specifications on my about me tab on twitch and god damn it okay these traps suck man I hate the traps in this room and um Uh, what did I do? That might have not been good. Um, but I got the, the HyperX quadcast. Um, and I thought, I thought it was going to be way expensive. Like, I thought a good streaming mic would be like two to three hundred dollars, if not more. And then when I looked this up, it was, I could get the regular one at the discount I had for a hundred bucks. Or I went with the, the quadcast S because I can change the color on my LEDs. I'll throw a picture in my in my um, Discord of it. Um, but I changed the LED um, to green. Because uh, green is my favorite color. Um, so it's a white mic with the green LEDs. Um, and I only paid 20 bucks more. So $120. And I got this mic. And then $20 for the, uh, the desk clamp on it. You'll see... Um, in the picture, I'll just post it right now in the Discord. But, um, <laughs> excuse me. So, um, you know, I got a good quality mic, and I haven't had a problem. I mean, there's a little bit of learning curve because it's a lot more technical than the mic I had before. Um, but I really like it. Um, I feel like it has good quality, and my friend said it sounded a lot better than the one I had before. I just set off all the fucking traps. Oh. And that is why we save. I thought I disarmed them by pushing that button, but I guess not. Damn. I don't remember how I did it before. I'm gonna have to guess.
Let's see. Okay. So I know before I had Lazel cast this mage hand. Um, and I think I made the mage hand push this button because I think once you set off the traps, the button turns off the traps, but it won't do it until the traps are going off. So we're going to try this again. Uh, we'll sneaky sneak Asterion in here to interact with the sarcophagus, and I'll have the mage hand right there to push the button to unfuck my situation, hopefully. We shall see. Traps. How considerate. Okay. Turn base mode. Careful, I bite. There are traps. Okay, so the traps are set off, but turn base mode has frozen them. So we can see that's all stopped. Right here, this like globe looking thing is the environment's turn. So technically, in the turn of order right now, it'd go Asterion then Lazel, then myself, then Shart, and then the Mage Hand. But I can switch between any of these guys right now. They have the same initiative. And then it would be the environment's turn. So after everybody goes, and then the environment, meaning the traps, would have their turn. So if I switch to the Mage Hand and deactivate them, just like that, I have unfucked myself. So now I can exit turn-based mode. Mage Hand, he's going to disappear on his own. But now I should be able to loot the Sarcophagus just fine. And just like that. There we go. And I don't remember what that key's for. I think it's for a chest somewhere. But, oh, and... I think I can walk over the vents. Yeah. Well, I'm going to bring everybody in here. So, that, that's how to do this trap in this room specifically. Um, oh, there goes the mage hand. He's gone. So, I'm going to save again since I got through the trap. Um, I, I'm definitely somebody that saves often. Uh, just because I don't like fucking up. Um, but I know there's some other areas with traps and stuff. There you go. So they're picking up all the traps now, but they've been disarmed, so they're not going to go off again. Um, and these vents on the ground just let out that poisonous gas. And then the gargoyle heads. Oop, another skull for my head bag. The gargoyle heads, um shot fireballs out so we had the the poisonous gas from the vents and then the gargoyle heads shot the fireballs and that is what blew me the fuck up so but that was only because i interacted with the sarcophagus so it's just a booby trap sarcophagus so nobody could steal the stuff watch how you go I don't know why, but I like to light the, uh, the candelabras. Um. That's just me. And the braziers. Trap. Be yeah, see, now they're picking up the traps just fine, after I've already dealt with them. Kind of annoying. I like how she just whispered, no traps, please. So the soul coin is something 
that you give to Carlac and it like powers her up kind of thing. Um, I'm going to kill her in this playthrough, so technically I don't need them, but they sell for really good. 100, 100 gold for that. So I am going to use it as a source of income for this game because they don't weigh anything pretty much. It was 0 0.01 in weight, so super light. And 100 gold for that? Hell yeah, I'm going to pick them up and I'm going to sell them. Oh, wait. Oh, never mind. And, that one. and then if I go through this door, it's going to take me back to the beach, if I remember correctly. Um, there is that locked door on the beach. I thought that key opened it. Hmm. Oh, Asterion has the key. I think I have to have Asterion give him the key. That's kind of annoying, but let's see. Okay, maybe not. Oh well. Uh, if I remember right, that just goes back out to the beach anyways. So I'm not going to sit there and waste my time or my lockpick kits on that. Uh-oh. I don't like this. I don't know what this is for. Well, at least I rolled a 20. On what? On a trap. I don't know what that was about, honestly. Okay. That's what the key was for. Okay, I had the wrong door. But like I said, uh, that door should go back out to the beach when I was out there. When you first crash from the ship, there's a locked door by that, um, like, waypoint. And if I remember correctly, that's that door anyways. So, like I said, I'm not going to waste my time or my um, lock pick kits on trying to get through that door. What's inside? Arm scribes, but no sign of a struggle. I wonder what was so subversive about their words that they commanded protection. Can I light that? No, I can't. Okay. I'm sure if I shot like a flaming arrow up there, it would light it, but I'm not going to waste resources on that. I'm just going to keep looting shit. come out here if we see this um, door right here when we were out on the beach I went down a little path and there was a a locked hatch and that is the hatch right here it comes down to here so if we pull that lever, that hatch is now unlocked outside, but we're not done exploring, so we're going to come back out this way. There is still more loot to get. And why is my torch not out? There we go. failed that religion check on my first playthrough so it was kind of nice to experience that which now like looking at the statue more like yeah that's definitely the grim reaper
There's another door. What? I don't think I went through this door before. Shit, what's through here? Forbidden knowledge. This book is far lighter than it should yeah, be. Yeah, I never Such went through this door. Lock. Knock the lock open with a spell. Let's try this. I'm sure this is going to be a roll. It is. And I failed. Damn. Can I try it again at a different time? Oh. Let's do that. Yes. Continue. What am I going to learn? As the lock opens, a loose page comes with it. Magic pulses from the parchment. Considering it said Book what of the Dead, this might be a necromancy spawn. one. You have a sense these are names, a list. But of what? Gods. These are the names of gods. Once lost, but now restored after the second sundering. The last three names in this book sit close together but are so devastated by the scroll as to be unreadable. Entire pantheons have dwindled and been reborn, silently recorded by this book. Huh, okay. Well, I want to take the book with me, that's for sure. Yeah, I've never been in this room because I, I did not come across that book before. So that's going to be interesting. I mean, technically on my Vegeta playthrough, I could come all the way back here and get that, but I'm not going to do that. Okay. We are almost done looting. Here goes nothing. And then over here, there's a button to push to get into a room. And as soon as I push that button, it should kick off a fight, if I remember correctly. So. I... I'm gonna go take a long rest because I don't have any spell slots right now and I'm a wizard I need spell slots so we're gonna camp take a long rest come back fuck shit up and nobody wants to talk oh the oathbreaker man's still here I wonder if he stays there now I mean to be fair he's kind of fucking cool looking so I'm not mad about that. I'm a sucker for cool armor. And I think his armor is pretty sick looking. Somebody should cosplay as him. As the Oathbreaker Knight. That would be pretty cool. Maybe if I had the knowledge of like doing that. But. I don't. <laughs> Flitting between dreams and nightmares. Maybe you wake up because you know something is wrong. Or maybe you just get lucky. Asterion. Shit. My little snacky boy. No, no. It's not what so, it looks like. I on my Vegeta playthrough. I... I I wasn't going to hurt you. I, I let him snack a little too long, and he well, does fucking kill you blood. if you let him snack long enough. There, in the dim firelight, you see him for what he really is. A vampire. A slave to sanguine hunger. He just wants a little nibble. I've never killed anyone. Well, not for food. I feed on animals. 
Balls. Deer. Kobolds. Whatever I can get. But it's not enough. Not if I have to fight. I feel so... weak. If I just had a little blood, I could think clearer. Fight better. Please. A strange sensation courses through you. He wants my and lizard blood. Mind unfolds, secrets half revealed. <sighs> Whatever. I mean, honestly, he does fight better after he has the blood and. It doesn't really no. affect me, I needed so you to trust me. And you can he can have a little me. nibble. Thank you. Do you think you could trust me just a little further? I only need a taste. I swear. Really? I... Of course. Not one drop more. Let's make ourselves comfortable, shall we? It's like a shard of ice into your neck. A quick, sharp pain that fades to throbbing numbness. Your breath catches, your pulse quickens. See, so if you just keep doing let him continue, I think it like takes three times. But he straight up kills you. Clear. I feel strong. I feel happy. Happy with that lizard blood. I'm looking forward to see you fight. Shouldn't take long. So many people need killing. Yes. Now, if you'll excuse me, you're invigorating, but I need something more filling. This is a gift, you know. I won't forget it. You watch as he stalks off, stronger, more I don't think it had um, the blood on his face before, like dripping from his mouth like that before. I think that might have been something they added in with, um, with the patches and everything. So I don't remember that, but I don't know. It's been a while since I saw that cinematic. It could have been like that before. It could have not been... I've slept since then. And he wants to talk. So we can see here I've got the bloodless condition. So uh, I feel a bit woozy. Minus one to attack roll. Saving throw is ability checks. So that kind of sucks having that debuff. But if I go over to Shart here. Um... I can I should be able to heal it with healing word maybe I think nope that didn't do it damn I forgot how to get rid of it okay it's fine for right now there's a necklace I can pick up I know exactly where it's at and uh I, have a lot on my mind. I can use the necklace to get and rid of the uh, the the debuff, so it'll be fine right now. It'll kind of suck a little bit, but ha, sucks like a Starian. Good morning. How do you feel? Just a bit woozy. It'll pass. Just be glad I'm not a true vampire. 
A bite from them, and you might wake up as a vampire spawn, like my good self. All of a vampire's hunger, but few of their powers. Oh no, I should be cinders in this light. I hadn't seen the sun for 200 years before we crashed here. Someone, or something, wants me alive. They've changed the rules. Standing in the sun, wading through a river, wandering into homes without an invitation. They're all perfectly mundane activities now. As for my other quirks, well, <laughs> we can figure those out in time. <laughs> you're such a sweetheart. I'm just glad you're being sensible about these uh, revelations. I was worried people might turn up with torches and pitchforks. Although there's still time. <laughs> a vampire? Well, that explains the pallor. Given our group's nature, I don't see much harm. We're each monsters in the making, after all. Okay, Shart. For his sake. He best not develop an appetite for Gith Yankee. Nah, he likes my lizard blood. We're good. Uh, quite the opposite. I'm here in the spirit of openness and... Of course Gail doesn't like him. ...to work together as a team. Maybe we could get him to wear a bell. Dissuade any nighttime... <laughs> there now. We're all friends again. Shall we go? There's a long day ahead of us. All right. And then I... I am enjoying the latest <sighs> addition to our little group. Laisel is delightful. In a very look at me twice and I'll dismember you kind of way, of course. I've already apologized. What more do you want? Unless you're looking for another nibble. Maybe. But there won't be any more midnight surprises. I can promise you that. What's to tell? I was sired by a vampire named Cazador. Everything before that is so long ago, it's ancient history. And everything that came after, well, um, I'd rather not reflect on it. simple. Just find a vampire that will drink your blood and turn you into a vampire spawn. Their obedient puppet. In theory, the next step is to drink their blood. Once you've done that, you're free and a true vampire. <laughs> yes and no. The problem is, once you're a vampire spawn, they completely control you. They have to allow you to bite them. And why would they do that? Vampires are power-hungry creatures. They won't lose a servant to create a competitor. Trust me, it doesn't happen. Okay. So, back on out. Now, once I push this button over here, because there's like a secret room right here in the middle, uh, once I push that button, it's going to kick off a fight. So I'm going to kind of position people here. My wizard, I'm going to have him push the button. Range attacks anyways. Uh, and if I remember right, each of these guys right here is what's going to wake up and attack me. So I need to put Lazel and Shart up here. 
so they can deal with these guys. What's next, I wonder? Let's try this way. So she's gonna be by that one. I guess we'll be done. Actually, I'm gonna have Fleet Zell go by this one. Well, and Asterion. I'm gonna set him all the way up here to deal with that one. So he gets that one. Shadowheart gets that one, Lazel gets that one, and then my mage can take out this one. Or my wizard, I mean, can take out that one after they push the button. All's well that ends. Let's do this. As as could have. So, Heidi door opens. Everybody freaks out. The dead are alive. There we go. So, all of my people get to go first. Oh, shit, there's a fifth one somewhere. Ah, over there. Okay. So. Hmm. Nice. Almost max damage for that. So I do now have the vampire bite action with him. Bonus action that heals me. Uh, I don't need any health. But um, the target gets 2 to 8 piercing damage. So I could use it right now. But... Once I use it, I can't use it again until I short rest. So I'm going to save it. Because if I need to heal him during this fight, I'm going to want that to be able to heal him. Because if I use it now, then I've, I've used it and I don't get it. So we will wait. She actually fucking hit something. And we're going to shield a faith Asterion. Because he's a bit squishy. What now? now we're on to the wizard. I'm gonna come over here. Too far. Okay, I need to get closer. Best be on my way. Try again. There we go. Nice. Okay, killed it. One hit. Well, one spell. And we're going to do Lacerate. Nice. And since she is a fighter, I can action surge and do another action. We'll do that. And we'll do a main hand attack. Damn. He is almost already fucking dead. Now it's their turn. So, three almost dead, one dead dead. He's the only one that didn't get hit, because I honestly kind of forgot about him. Nice, okay. So when I'm up against something like that, when I'm touching them, when they move away, I get an attack of opportunity. It's so like when that one moved away, Shadowheart got to attack him. She missed because Shadowheart be Shadowheartin'. And then when that one moved, Asterion was able to hit him, and he got the kill because Asterion actually gets the job done. Look at that. He's so good. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and bite. Just kidding. You can't bite the undead, apparently. Makes a bit sense. Stay focused. On my way. Go chase your guy down. Okay, there we go. Still on my feet. Let's get a little closer. And I should be able <coughs> I should be able to kill him. Let's do two for him. And let's do one there. Yep. And now he's got one health left. So as long as Lazel doesn't miss, he's fucking dead too. 
I should have said anything. This causes damage, so maybe. There we go. Now, they're considered looted because I looted them before that fight started. And, I mean, it didn't give them any loot. Like, they don't magically have loot again. So, I can just... I don't have to worry about running around to get them. But, I do have this treasure room now. Oh, I'm going to give that amulet to Lazelle to put on. Just because there is a different amulet that I want my main guy Balthazar to have. And that is the one to heal myself after Asterion has his little snacky snack. Um, but I, I don't have it yet, but... I'm gonna be. I'll, I'll get it soon enough that I'm just gonna give that one to, to Lazel, so she can talk to the dead. Um. Um. Give me your skull. I want to put you in my head bag. So he has spoken, and so thou standest before me. Right, as always. What a curious way to awaken. Now, I have a question for thee. What is the worth of a single mortal's life? Curiosity. Nothing more. I don't remember Won't what I said to him before. Question. Uh, ask away. So, I ask again, what is the worth of a single mortal life? Oh, life is worth the other. Depends on the deeds. Life is currency. Each life is of infinite value. The only life that matters is mine. Depends on the mortal. That sounds I'm good enough for me. curious by what standards thou shalt judge. Very well. I am satisfied. We have met, and I know thy face. We will see each other again at the proper time and place. Farewell. Farewell, pony man. Now, make sure to loot. So my first playthrough, I hoarded all the gems. I kept them in a bag. I'm like, these gotta be for something, because I'm just so used to games. Like, you cut the gems for enchantments, and you put them in your weapons and your armor and stuff to get enchantments. Nah, they don't... They don't... They don't do shit in this game. They, it's just... It's just loot to sell. So, 
As soon as I found that out, I made like 500 gold on just gems, just selling the gems. I'm like, that's definitely something nice to know. Um, <laughs> like, I, I had to Google it because I'm like, I need to know what I'm supposed to do with these. We have nothing more to discuss. I must attend this place after so many years away. We will the mechanics of regardless. Okay, I honestly didn't know he walked around this room. I thought he just disappeared, but I mean that could be something they changed in a in a patch also that he walks around in the room after, but pff, I don't know. So we are officially done with this dungeon. Seems simple enough. Um I didn't mean to close those doors. We've looted everything, we've come across withers, we've killed everybody. I still won't be able to open this door unless I sit there and try to lockpick it, which... It's a level 20 door. You know what, I'm gonna save and give it a couple tries. But, I can always head up a long way around. Shit. Okay, never mind. I guess I have the key. Is that blood? So. No, never mind. Don't need to do shit now. Okay. Oh, you know what? I think I got the key from one of the, uh. <clears throat> one of the, uh undead guys that I killed, I'm pretty sure. So we're gonna kind of fast travel up here. I It kills me when I don't have the map totally uncovered, so I'm gonna pop in there. And then we're gonna head to the druid camp and, and that will pretty much be the end of my stream right there. As I said, I was only going to do 6 o'clock. It is 5.44 right now. So I got like 15 minutes left. So, right here. And this fire on the ground, this is what I'm talking about. You need to carry some water on you. I've got water somewhere. Water. Right there. Grow. Boom. And now the fire is gone. I can walk right over it. Nice and safe. See that? That is why water is so damn useful in this game. I'm gonna do a short rest. So I know when I come up here it's gonna be another fight. Unfortunately, but then that's the druid camp anyways, so... We're gonna come this way. I wanna try and get that fight done and get into the druid camp and then call it done once I reach the druid camp. So here's another waypoint for the fast travel system. So we can say we got three so far. And there is a lot in chapter one. We have to, uh, let's go up here. That way we have a nice vantage point for this fight. That did not set off the fight. Open the bloody there we go. Nobody gets in. Zevlor's orders. That pack of goblins will be on us any second! What's going on? Goblins are on our tail! Open the gates, Zevlor, now! You let goblins here? Where is the druid? Please! There's no time! By the nine hells! Open the gates! I 
like how he says form a line and then nobody fucking waits. They just run off. Provoke the blade. And suffer its sting. There's Will. Alrighty. Big ass lineup. I forgot that shit spawns up here. Damn, okay. Make it hurt. One hit kill. Fuck yeah. So we're gonna have him wait right there. That guy's gonna die. He's gonna die so hard. See, I like how the NPCs also go for the high ground like that. Like, I feel like they did well with the, the AI for the most part in this game. That they have them do that. Um, Cause like, as a player, that's what I would do. Because it give me advantage with my bow and whatnot, so they did pretty good. So I want to use that in this area because it does an area of effect, but that's gonna hit that guy. And I don't want to do that. So we're gonna magic missile. Um, let's see. We'll go two on him. And one on this guy right here. So he's dead. He's almost dead. And jam on the flute. Condition rallied. What's that? Eight temporary hit points. Nice. Okay. When I go Come up here. I don't have any spell slots with her. Okay, so we're just gonna go smack him or not shadow heart and be shadow heart and So she's done She's really fucking useless man like Don't know why I got her around Jump down there. Smack him. He's dead. Let's see. I'm not gonna action the charge just because I'm way up here. I'm not gonna be able to really do anything with it. I mean, I can range attack, but she doesn't have strong range attacks. Shit. That sucked. I mean, honestly, it didn't do too much damage to me because I had the temporary hit points, but that still sucked. Fuck it.
Good decision. Skull from a head bag. And he can start heading that way. Damn. Okay. Damn, you know what? Oh, there we go. So he's not resistant to anything, so fire or ice I can do. And the fire has a higher damage range. I don't think he even did anything, did he? Oh. Alright, well, it doesn't really matter what Shadowheart's gonna do because she's gonna fucking miss, anyways. I mean, can she jump that far? She can. Let's do that. Smack him. Missed. Shadow heart and shadow heart and. I don't know why she fucking misses like everything. Like everybody's got that issue with shadow heart. She may be God's favorite princess, but she's the player's least favorite NPC. I just don't. Let's do this. Kill him. Look at that. See, now this is where... I fucked that up. I could have action surged and then killed him with the last two health, but... I hit the wrong button. So he's almost dead. And he's got three people on him, so I'm not going for him. I'm gonna go for this guy... I can get pretty much there. And I'm in range, so we're good. Boom. And we're good. Look at that. Okay, this is going a lot better than I thought it was going to. I should probably get out of the fire. I think that's hurting me each time. Plus, I think he's too far. Oh, no. I can hit him from here. Fuck it. And he's almost done. Okay. Now we'll jump down. <laughs> okay, everybody else jumped just fucking fine. And then I jump with, with my main guy and he falls over. Like, really? I bet she's gonna miss. <laughs> Useless. Finish it. There we go. That was the last of them. Inside, all of you, more may follow. Open the gate. Can't control. Knocked ages. down. I wonder what they wanted here, other than bloodshed. All right. I just wonder if the grubby little beasts are their friends, and if they're nearby. Let's loot their bodies. Want some hair? Right. 
Okay, I don't like that I'm walking that slow. Alrighty. There are children here, you fool! There's one for our lives. You let them so covered in blood. You let them take the druid too. Unbelievable. <laughs> you can cough up my payment anytime now. Yes. Payment. I didn't ask for any goddamn help. Please, you were begging me to open the gate. Anything to <laughs> save yourself, you coward. The human's eye twitches. He's about to blow. Intimidation. Oh, shit. Eh. Eh, we'll... Oh, I failed so bad. I'm not very intimidating, apparently. Let's try it again. One more time. There we go. Enough. Squabbling is pointless. The goblins have found us. At least we agree on that. More goblins could be on their way. I'm more worried about the parasite than a few goblins. We I'm need a healer. We need to leave. All right. Well, I'm going to save. I'll go with the main save this time. There we go. So we made it to the druid camp. Um, which, I mean, they won't be around for long. You'll see next time. Why? We have choices to be made. Um... And that's it. I said I was going to stream to 6 p.m. It just hit 6 p.m. here. This is a very good spot to save and call it good. Um, tomorrow I will be streaming about the same time, 12-ish to 6. I might start a little bit later, um, just because I might be having lunch with a friend. We'll see how she's feeling. Um, but, uh, I, you know, I'll send an alert. You guys get a notification on Twitch anyways. Thank you, Blank, if you're still there. Thank you for joining me. Uh, keeping me some company. Um, tomorrow, Helldivers 2. Um, I'm going to pl be playing it pretty much the whole stream, just like I did Boulder's Gate the whole stream. Um, hopefully, I don't have technical difficulties tomorrow. And my audio doesn't get caught out. And I can stream the whole time without having to stop. So... Uh, we are calling it a night on this. Um, you know, it, for a first stream, that was a lot of fun. Uh, I'm looking forward to streaming more. And, um, you know, um, oh shit, what am I doing on my screen? And, um, like I said, I stream a variety of things, so, um, it's not going to be always the same thing. It's not going to always be Boulder's Gate or Helldivers 2. I'm going to switch it up a lot. Um, I've got, um, you know... I've got the throwback Thursday that I'm doing, so that's going to be Legend of Dragoon. So, you know, I'm going to switch it up. And if there's anything you guys recommend, just let me know. You know, if especially if it's a free game or I, I have Xbox Game Pass. I've got PlayStation Premium. So those have a lot of free games that I can play too. Um, I have a large game library. I'm not going to put a whole list of them because that would take me way too long. 
to make a list of all the games I have. So, but if it's something I have or I can play for free on the Game Pass or whatever, definitely I'd give it a shot. I that would be fun. But just let me know if there's a game you recommend. Um. Otherwise, again, I am calling it a night on that. Um, let's see. And, uh, I, I think what I'm going to do when I'm calling it a night is that I'm going to, I've got this little stream is ending and, um, I'll play a song. Either you guys can recommend a song because I do have a setup that, uh, I can, in theory, if it's working right. Um, that I have the audio for Spotify split when it goes on VOD for Twitch, so I won't get hit with a copyright claim. So I should be able to play any song I want to without it being affected. So I'm just going to go through uh, a playlist that I have. I'm just going to play a song as we wrap up. You guys can stay and listen or you can leave. It doesn't matter. But I'm going to play the song, and when it's done, then I'll end the stream. So, um, thank you for joining me. Thank you for keeping me company. Um, here's the song that's playing right now. So, um, I will be back on tomorrow. Uh, Helldivers 2. Tuesday, I don't know what I'm going to be playing, but that one, it's a shorter stream. It's only, uh like 5 to 8 or 5 to 9 p.m. after I get home from work. Uh, same with the Thursday stream, 5 to 8, 5 to 9, something like that. That's the throwback Thursday. So I'll see you guys tomorrow, and I'll let you listen to the song. <laughs>